All right, in this next example, let's read this. Number six, uh, which generates more money? 6% compounded quarterly or 6.25% compounded annually? Now, notice it does not tell you what, how much you're investing or how much time there is. And that's because it's not going to matter. Um, you're going to see that if we, as long as the, the P, you calculate, you invest the same amount of money, uh, at the, and the same, at the same time, that's not, that's, it's not going to matter. Um, and I mean, I can, I can sh show that once we write the formulas down. So 6% compounded quarterly. Okay. So this means that in this first scenario, we have R is 0 0.06 and n is 4. In the second scenario, r is 0 0.0625 and n is 1. Okay. Now we would have, if we write out the our formula, this would be p times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 raised to the 4t. In this case, the amount would be p times 1 plus uh, 0 0.0625 divided by 1 raised to the 1 times t. And you can see that um, it doesn't matter what, if we were to compute these, it, it, this, these, both these p's are the same. So it's really a matter of which, which is bigger, this number or this number. And because t at the exponent t here, this is this is you can write this as some number raised to the t, and this is some number raised to the t. So it's really all about this: is one point uh, one plus point zero six over four raised to the fourth power, and this is one plus point zero six two five raised to the first power. And this turn this first value turns out to be one point zero six one three six and this of course is one point zero six two five and we can see that uh, this is bigger this is bigger right so the answer would be six point two five percent compounded annually that's bigger okay. um, if we look at number seven uh, what rate of interest compounded annually is required to double an investment in three years? Once again, we're not given what the uh, amount is, the initial amount, the principal, because it's not going to matter. Um, because our formula says that uh, our amount is going to be P times, well, I'll say that um, R is what we're lo really looking for. T is 3. And we want A to be equal to 2 times P. And compounded annually, so N is 1. So we want 2P to be equal to P times 1 plus R over 1 raised to the 1 times 3. Okay. And when you simplify this, you can cancel the p's. What this boils down to is 2 is equal to 1 plus r raised to the third power. So, because the p's will cancel. Right, hopefully you can see that. We want to solve for r. Okay, we have 1, we know that 1 plus r cubed is 3. Is, uh, cubed, 1 plus r cubed is 2, so we take the cube root of both sides. And then subtract 1. So r is going to be the cube root of 2 minus 1. And this means that r, if you plug this into your calculator, this is 0.2, it's approximately 0.26. Okay. Or which means the interest would be to have to be 26% to be to double your money in three exactly three years. It wouldn't be um, it, again, it doesn't matter how, what your initial investment would be. We look at example eight. How many years will it take uh, for an initial investment of ten thousand to grow to twenty-five thousand? We assume a rate of interest of interest. I should say interest rate of six percent compounded continuously. Okay. 
In this case, we're starting with 10,000, so that's our principal. We want our amount after this period to be 25,000. Our interest rate is 6%, so R is 0 0.06. And we're asked how many years will it take okay, for this to happen. We're compounding continuously, so we use the PERT formula. So we have um, A, which is 25,000, equals P, which is 10,000, times E to the 0 0.06 T. All right, and this is the first time where we're going to actually have to solve an exponential equation, where the unknown is actually part of an exponent. Um, to do that, we want to isolate this power of E first, so we can divide both sides by 10,000. And then this becomes 2.5 equals E to the 0 0.06 T. All right, and we can see how do we, if you remember how we do this now, we can get, we can take the log of both sides. We definitely want to use the natural log because of the E. And this cancels and this is just 0 0.06 T. So we get the log of 2.5 equals 0 0.06 T. Okay, in fact, you could probably Go directly from here to here. Divide both sides by 0 0.06. And this turns out to be 15.27. Okay, so that's how many years it would take. Okay, again, you need a calculator for that. Okay, I'm going to let you look at number 9. Let you pause the video and I'll let you uh, think about it. Okay, there's our equation. Hopefully you found out what A, P, A, R, and N will be. And we're trying to solve for T. Okay. And uh, this is similar to this number right here. 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12. This is still just a number. So we can still um, do it almost the same way. We did up here. Except instead of E, we just have another number here. All right, so we divide both sides by 100. Okay, so this gives us 1.75 equals this, this number raised to the 12T. You can take out your calculator and find that this is 1.00208 to the 12T. That's 1 plus 0 0.025 over 12. That's what this number is. Then we can take the log of both sides and bring this 12t out front. Okay. And then divide both sides. We want to get rid of the 12 and this log so we can do that. And then it turns out, if you plug this into your calculator, um, this turns out to be 22.44 years. Okay, so that's that's how long it would take to uh, for it to get $175, starting with 100.